Hey guys, it's Deborah. So this video today is completely stacked. It is filled with so much information and so many encouraging things and just connections. It's just filled to the brim. I, I've been trying to make this video for like three days and finally it is done. So the image that you see before you is the train de derailment in Palestine, Ohio. And I was not looking into this very much. I mean, it was bad. I know it was, but it wasn't something I was trying to research. The stuff was coming to me. Like the Lord was putting so much with regards to the rapture train and this and connections and giving them to me. And I'll explain. So, um, but before I start that, just quickly, um, I do find like right now, it's just been really quiet on the YouTube Watchmen community. I mean, maybe I'm not just, I'm just not um, subscribed to a ton of channels. So maybe that's why, but I feel it's been really quiet, but it's interesting because right now there's a lot going on still. And um, I don't know if you guys heard, but a, a, like a US drone, I think it was, was just shot down. No, wasn't shot down, was just kind of taken down because um, a Russian I don't know if it was an aircraft or whatever. It basically forced the drone down into the Black Sea um, by pouring something on it or something like that, basically. And then Russia's denying it. I don't know if you guys heard this, but this just happened. So that is causing some tension for sure. So this drone now just went into the Black Sea. Um, and you have all the stuff with the banks in the United States. Um, actually, Canada, where I'm at, has some of the Silicon Valley I don't know. We have some something here with related to that. So there's something going on even here. So moving along, guys, like I said, this is stacked. It is so full. But um, I have this verse up here because it is with regards to my last video where I was like, hey, maybe this is my last video, <laughs> um, which I've said that before. I said maybe. Um, I said if God wants me to continue to say things, you know, I will. I thought maybe my channel was coming full circle because my last video was kind of like this. It talked about things that I had been talking about from my last two videos had been, I've been talking about from when I started this channel four years ago. So it's like a four year full cycle. But God, like I said, with this train derailment stuff, he started bringing things to me. So that being said, um, I'm going to, yeah, let me just read this first. It says, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I'm weary with holding it in, and I cannot. That's Jeremiah um, 20, verse 9. It's basically saying, you know, when you have to speak, when the Lord has something and it's like a fire, you try to hold it in sometimes, but you cannot. And this is, I wasn't really trying to hold it in, but this is something that, yep, I have to share with you guys. So let's get into the video. So something happened to me last week that made me realize that's it. There's so many connections. I have to share all this stuff. So I was driving down a road that I typically don't drive on. I'm not used to this road. I'm driving on this road. It's like a pretty main road. And all of a sudden I see I get to train tracks. And you know, a lot of times you're just not even really like noticing them. You just drive over them or whatever. But this time immediately lights start flashing. You hear the bells going really, really loud. I'm practically at the train tracks and the little arms go down so fast Typically, there's, you know, it's slow. You're ding, ding, ding. The arms start going down and you sit there. <clears throat> and I've been stuck behind a train in another road um, many times, this other road I go on. And it is long. It takes forever. I know if I get here and this train is coming, it is literally going to be, I'm going to be sitting there for like, I could be there for like five minutes or more. So this time I'm like, whoa, but these arms are going down fast. They're just going right down. And it's so loud. And then so I stop and this train flies by. I mean, it's the train seems like it's five feet long. Like it is the shortest train and it just goes whoop, zoom right past me and it's gone. And then you hear ding, ding, ding. And the arms go up. So <clears throat> um, I'm only saying how fast was. I've never seen a train like that before. I, I obviously this is a thing. I've never every train is slow and long and big. You know, it's usually transport. This thing was a bullet train. And I was like, whoa, that was a super fast train. But that wasn't what really made me think about all the connections. So I had a bunch of connections, train things coming to me for a while now, and I'll explain. But then this happened while I was while that train sped by me. This song was playing in my car. So this is like an old school song from 2003. It's Kelly Clarkson. The album's called Thankful and the song is called Just Missed the Train. So I have had a lot of train stuff happening to me 
uh, through the last several weeks, if not like a month. And um, I that now I'm feeling the Lord has connected and wants me to share with you guys. But yeah, this as this train is flying by me, I'm listening to a song called Just Missed the Train. Yeah, right. Like, why would that be on? And um, I've been listening to some some like 90s and like old school music because it's like cleaner and I don't really listen to secular music. So I got a little bored of some of the Christian stuff out there right now. So I was, I was listening to some like old school, like cleaner music. Anyway, I listened to her album, her old album. Yeah, so just missed the train. And here's some lyrics from that song. It says, remember crying in the park. It was getting dark. Suddenly I looked up. You were my sky. Like, how is that even a thing? She was crying in the park. It was getting dark. She looks up and she's singing about a guy probably. You were my sky. I'm so sorry we got to the station a little too late. It's such a shame we just missed the train. I mean, <clears throat> and that will relate to what I'm talking about, about missing the rapture and the rapture and just stuff like that. So basically this song, like, I mean, there's more to the song, obviously, but I just looked up a few of the lyrics. I'm like, you know, you think about... um like somebody missing the rapture, you know, it's getting dark, late hour, it's late in the hour, and you're looking up. Why would you even say, I looked up and you were my sky? Like, why would you even say that to somebody, like as a love song? I looked up and you were my sky? So anyway, the point is, the song is called Just Missed the Train, and I'm literally, I pull in front of this thing, and I have never, this was a bullet train, okay? And it symbolized to me that it will be fast. This rapture that's going to happen, it is going to be so fast and people are going to be regretful and they are going to be, they're going to be like this. They're just going to be, they're going to be sorry. Now this will all relate to that Ohio incident and stuff like that. It'll all tie in. Like I said, it is stacked. So that happens to me. It's my confirmation that I need to go ahead and share all this. So what do you see before you? This is a video game and it is called Everybody's Gone in the Rapture. Okay, so this is by PlayStation. Everybody's gone to the rapture. And a big part of the game is train derailment. You have to go through all these different, find these different trains and like take codes off the trains, numbers, and do this whole thing. I, I looked into it. I haven't played this game, but it was made in 2015 and it was made the same day I made my YouTube channel, August 11th, 8-11. And there is like, 8, 11, 11, 8, 1, 1, 8, 8, 1, 1. There's all these connections with that with, um, like, I'm not talking about numerology. I'm just, like you guys, I know I've talked about this before. There's a book called The Book of Numbers in the Bible, and there is number connections. Anyway, you guys all know. So, yeah, I started my channel on 8-11. This video game was made on 8-11, and it is called Everybody Has Gone to the Rapture, and it is very um, strongly related to train derailment. I will connect all of this, but one big thing is, this is my opinion. I feel like the enemy is more trying to say, and I only talk about the enemy's plans, but I feel like the enemy is more trying to say, <clears throat> you know, this rapture train is going to get derailed. Um, however that looks, if it means people are going to be left behind, like in that Kelly Clarkson song, um, you know, they're going to lose hope or maybe the enemy believes he can stop it. I don't know. I just know that is part of what this is and that, there is a symbolism of a rapture train, even in the Bible that I'm going to show you guys. A rapture train. You've heard of people say, oh, get on the train. People say, get on the bus, get on the plane. Like anything, lots of people have had dreams of some sort of symbolic transportation device that we use in our modern world to help our everyday minds. We're obviously not going to take a train in the rapture. Um, but God uses symbolism. Look at Revelation 12. There's so much symbolism in just the book of Revelation alone. Anyway, so the fact that there's a video game called Everybody's Gone to the Rapture and a big part of it is train derailment, like that is a big part of the game. That should say, hey, perk up guys, there's something. There's probably so much more to the game and the connection, but I want to say I think a big part of the dark side of it is basically, or the enemy's point of view, is that people getting left behind. It's about people getting left behind or somehow botching up this, this blessed hope, taking away the blessed hope, either taking it away via having churches not talk about it, taking people's hope, taking people's faith, taking people's belief. Um, the Bible says you're supposed to pray you're accounted worthy to escape. So you should be in a regular prayer time of asking God, help me to escape like Noah, like Lot. You should be asking. He said to do that. So you should be doing that. Um, whereas oh, most of the church don't even remember there is a, such a thing as the rapture or end times, tribulation. It's going right before. It's like a speeding train, like what happened, uh, speeding right past them. 
And then they're going to be like looking up at the sky, just like Kelly Clarkson saying, oh no, I just missed the train. So that's that video game. Here's another connection that I just saw. So this was on Steve Fletcher's channel. I didn't know this was a thing, but this movie, it's a little short movie called Journey. This movie um, is on the same channel. It's not made by the same people that made iPad Goat, but it's on the same channel that has the most views ever of iPad Goat. So they, I guess it's another, I don't know if it, I don't know who it really made it, but sorry, you can look it up. It was another, it, they, it's, it's linked with iPad Goat, let's just say. So it's a little cartoon. Um, it's called Journey. It's about a guy getting on a train. There you go again. Um, I don't know if you can see it closely, but the train's number is 1901. So there's like a 911 kind of kind of thing you got 1901 so anyway um so he's getting on this train and remember this is from the sad side of things the derailment side of things it's not going to work out side of things so everything's dark um then you see him get on the train and the train shoots up in the sky like a raptor like a raptor train and you see the crescent moon like that's a thing trust me that's a thing I think on February 14th, there was an unscheduled crescent moon over Israel or something like that. Um, so did I, say, did I say February 14th? That's what I meant to say. Or February 15th, like around Valentine's Day and all the stuff. I made a video on that. Um, and yeah, unplanned crescent moon. So that's a thing. Um, and then you see him get off the train and he goes, sees all the clocks. But at midnight, um, he gets dropped off midnight. Um, but he's in space for a while. Anyway, so he gets dropped off on the moon and he's so sad. Like instead of going to like a beautiful place, he goes to like this dusty, dark, horrible place and it ends really sad. Um, so again, I'm not, I don't like to delve into these things and I'm not trying to make full sense of it. Honestly, I wouldn't have even dived into or gone, like looked into all of this stuff if it wasn't for the Lord bringing me so many confirmations but at the very end he looks he's standing on this dark desolate moon and he sees um like the train fly again past planet earth so maybe he thinks hey more people are coming my way second rapture i don't know so the train's going back to earth to bring more people i guess to maybe where he is and he gets happy then so the point is though it's it's not pleasant um it whatever it's portraying i mean they probably have their own reasoning or whatever but i just find it interesting that this movie was just made and um, I'm getting all these, all this train symbolism, what happened in Palestine. And when I connect it all, you're going to be like, wow, that's a lot. It is stacked. So anyway, um, I feel like what this is saying is again with the derailment, again, breaking down hopes. Oh, you're going to end up in a dark, desolate place. You're going to be on the moon. You're going to, whatever you're looking forward to is going to suck. Um, it's kind of just all bad news. And like I read some of the comments under the video and it said, because fallen angels are confined in the frozen Arctic, they will be released in due time. Someone else put the train is 1901. That could be 911. So yeah, that's just interesting and true. Um, and then this one says, what kind of sick individual would make such a cute little video turn out in such a desolation and despair? Only a demon who can see its fate in an isolation and total darkness looking back at the world that it helped to destroy. Only humans look for a happy ending in stories. I pray for such lost souls. Maranatha. So not sure what souls the person's praying for there. But anyway, so basically the point of this comment is that it went so dark and dingy and sad like what kind of thing is that and again this derailment of the rapture train it is like whatever the plan is it's you know I think it's through discouragement is a big part of it and also hiding it and making it not a fact it's turning a happy thing into a sad thing which it will be just like that Kelly Clarkson song if you missed it and it's super fast so my last uh, not my last not even close to my last thing my um my next big thing that happened to me, this is how it all kind of started. And this was several months ago. So I was sitting in my car again, this time with my daughter, we were sitting there and we were driving and all of a sudden we heard a siren, like a, like a alert siren, either on my phone or in the radio. And it was like, you know, when it goes off and it's like emergency and we get this alert, um, my phone's hooked up to my car. So I can't remember how it came through, but it came through and it basically, um, was one of those governmental, emergency warning but it was for a tornado a tornado warning um so again i live in canada i've never i have never where i live i have never um i have never seen a tornado i mean may i think there's been you know obviously a little something i don't even know but anyway that's not a thing so really of much where i am of much concern so i get this tornado warning and sirens going off while i'm driving in the car 
I look at the time in the car and it's 3.33. So here I am getting a tornado warning. And oh, by the way, it was a clear, beautiful day or that I recall no problems that we saw. And here they're saying there's a tornado warning where there shouldn't be any. And it's 3.33 p.m. Now I remember it was on the radio the alert came on, interrupted music, and it was 9-11 radio station. So at 3.33 on 9-11 radio station, we get this governmental warning. I mean, that's a lot right there. And the song that was playing on the radio when we get this warning, it's the lyrics say, get your house in order, the train leaves tonight. So this happened months ago. So here we are driving, we get this tornado warning in a place that doesn't have tornadoes. And on 9-11 radio station, they're singing the song, get your house in order, the train leaves tonight. So this happened months ago. And we're sitting there like, is this about to be the rapture? Like, we're like, this is it, this is it, this could be it, this could be it. Because here we are getting this tornado warning saying the train leaves tonight. We didn't even know, we didn't, there wasn't like these train connections back then. I wasn't thinking anything to do with the train, but you know, when you hear the train leaves, you think I'm out of here kind of thing. Get your house in order, the train leaves tonight at 3.33 p.m. on radio station 911. I mean, that's why I say this is stacked. There's just so much. So you can be like, oh, well, what's the point? What's the point? I will wrap it up. I will give you, I will read the Bible. I will you know, make it make sense at the end. Um, but these are all warnings. These are all um, encouragements, some of them. And these are all, you know, just signs, messages, things that we can use to tell other people to stay encouraged, to not be, you know, not lose hope in the rapture, rapture train. Um, and, you know, give in to that, des that destitute feeling or de um, feeling like, oh, it's not going to happen or despair. I think that's the word I was looking for. Um, just feeling like it's going to be derailed. So yeah, this was my next connection. And this happened several months ago. So what happened when this happened, I got on the alert thinking, what was that? And I'm thinking, do I make a video? Do I, I left it. I left it till now. And all of it is connecting. And I'll keep going and giving you more of the connections. So let's keep going. This video is from five years ago. This is a channel called um, uh, Midnight Hour Oil with Melissa. Midnight Hour Oil is the name. Um, like the wise virgins, the oil. Midnight Hour Oil. Um, and so she made a video five years ago called Rapture Train Revelation. Yes, that's right. So here's some more, you know, ways to tie this all together to make this a bit more cohesive and understand why God are you saying this so she had this most beautiful and amazing revelation and I'm going to share it with you guys and this is why I believe you know we get this train symbology why we keep you know why even the enemy is using trains too um and stuff like that but there's even more this is not the there's more but let me um explain to you what her revelation was so God told her it's in the Bible so listen to this Ephesians 4 8 why he said when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So when he, this is directly being pulled from an Old Testament verse saying Jesus, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. And it comes from Psalm 68. It said, you ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train, in your train, and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious that the Lord God may dwell there. So the, what it is saying is when Jesus ascended after being crucified and rose from the dead, he went to Abraham's bosom. These, this is what this verse is, these verses are about. He went to Abraham's bosom in the center of the earth. He had the the uh, keys to Hades and hell. He unlocked it and took everyone out who was in Abraham's bosom and led them up in his train, in his tra his rapture train out of the center of the earth. And then many people saw the saints, um, you know, appear in their resurrected bodies. Remember in the city in Israel and stuff like that. So anyway, they saw him and then he took them up in his train to the father's house. He got them out on the rapture train. It's a rapture train. There's actually a rapture train in the Bible. It is so beautiful. 
This is a little insert from an article about this. It says, in the final analysis, the picture of Christ having captives in his train communicates that he is the conquering king leading a train or a procession or a parade of captives who are the spoils of war. So basically, there's a couple different ways you can see it. But whenever he sets captives free and he brings them out, it's like it's his train or his procession or a parade of people but in literally there's a verse like I said I read in Psalm 68 and I think there's a bunch of 68 connections with something is there something about 68 and all the wars world war one two three something there but anyway Psalm 68 is about him getting people out of Abraham's bosom leading them in a rapture procession procession parade train a rapture train out of the center of the earth up to the father's house he actually has a rapture train and that's the next one. See how in that little movie journey, the guy was dropped off somewhere and then the train went back to earth to pick up more people because it happens more than once. You have Enoch, you have Elijah, you have the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture. You're praying you're counted worthy to escape. You have possibly at seal six, there's this great multitude. Like there's a lot. There's a lot. You have the two witnesses. There's a lot of times people are pulled up. And then you have the one I'm talking about when he went into Abraham's bosom and he took them all out because that's where people, if you guys don't know, when you died prior to Jesus' resurrection, when you died, the souls went to the middle of the earth, Abraham's bosom. That's in the Bible. Okay. They went to Abraham's bosom, which is a, a, a paradise. If you look up the story with the Lazarus and the rich man, if you guys are new Christians or whatever, I know there's some. Look up the story with Lazarus and the and the rich man. There's a parable Jesus tells, and he says, Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom, but the rich man went to like hell, basically, a bad place. So they were near each other in the center of the earth. But what happened when Jesus ascended, he was able to get the keys and he unlocked it and took them up on his rapture train out of the middle of the earth. And um, they now can, there's a place for heaven. That's where he started preparing a place for us. So he um, right now is back at the father's house and he was, he's been preparing a place for us for 2000 years. So everyone else who comes will have a place to go. So that's, there's a real rapture train. All this, this parade procession, a train made me think of this parade of planets that happened. Remember when that happened? Um, it says it won't happen again until 2040. Interesting. So, um, I believe so then, you know, it won't happen again. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, unless I mean, it won't happen again prior to the millennial reign. That's how I see it. So anyway, um, yeah, it's kind of like this parade of planets. It was, it's almost like it's a train. It's, it's a parade. It's a procession. And it just reminds me of what it was saying about how he, you know, he paraded them out of Abraham's bosom, like a procession. And anyway, that, that's just something I thought of. So now I'm going to um, change the focus to something else a little different, but it's going to be connected. I was going to make this part of the video a different video. I was so, I'm like, Lord, this is not connected. I, I need to separate them. I kept feeling the Holy Spirit say, put them together, put them together. Literally until this morning, I had no idea why I was supposed to do it until this morning. So now I'm doing it. I, <sighs> praise God. I didn't know why I was about to delete them. Ah, oh, I'm still... I'm still, I'm sorry, guys, you're gonna, you're hearing my emotion because I literally, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make sense a lot of times to your human brain. You're like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And sometimes you're wrong, you know, I'm sure. But as you get better and better listening, you know, you're right a lot. And um, this didn't make sense for me to talk about this, but I'm going to do it. But now it does. This morning, this is when he connected it, um, when I was about to fully record and finish the video. So anyway, um, here you see my most watched video. It's um, called Jesus is Coming, Three Gates About to Open. Um, so I made this two years ago. It's my most watched video. And basically the reason, um, okay, let me back up. God had been putting on my heart to rewatch this video. I didn't remember what it was. I didn't remember what gates were opening. I didn't remember anything. And at the end of this video, I actually say, this might be my last video. <laughs> so that's funny. Anyway, um, so I rewatched it and I realized that the three gates are, and if you haven't watched it, I'll just tell you in brief synopsis. The three gates are the gates of heaven will open to receive us, you know, after the rapture. And, you know, if you pass away and so like but the gates of heaven open and then you have um, the gates of Hades, they're opening. And I talk about at that time when I was making the video, the Golden Gate Bridge was either on fire or like the sky was totally red. I don't remember what was happening. I think there was fires, fires in that area. And the sky was like completely red. So you have the gates of heaven opening, the gates of hell opening. And the third gate, which a lot of people don't know, but there's a, there's a, 
not a portal. There's a gate um, in Israel, and I forget, I'm sorry, all the names and stuff. It's in my video where it says, so this particular gate has never been opened. Actually, um, it's been many by many rulers. It's been forced shut that um, the, it can never, no one, it's illegal to open this historical gate in Israel. And this is the same place Jesus, it says, will come back. When he comes back, uh, the second coming, he will go through this gate. So I'm sorry, I'm kind of vague here. You can watch this video, but basically it's a gate that is shut in Israel that only, it says that Jesus, Jesus will open when he puts his feet on the Mount of Olives. And up until now, every, like, I think it's been Muslim leader and stuff, they have not allowed anyone to open this gate. So you can check that out, but there's three gates, but God has brought my attention back. And the reason he has is what he is trying to bring my mind to, and this sounds crazy, is portals. He's trying to right now talk to me about portals. And when you think about it, to get to heaven, it's a portal into like a third dimension, third heaven. Like, I don't know, you know, you can't just fly there. Um, and then Hades and coming out of the center of the earth and what's going to come out in the tribulation is a portal. And also it's like when he's having come back on his second coming, again, we're coming through what we would in our human minds, I guess, call a portal. Um, so again, it's just, he's been, this video, I believe he's bringing back to my attention because he's saying the gates now really are opening. Like I think at the time, you know, for us now means like a minute and for him, it could mean years. And so for me, I think he's saying that video, I think the reason it was my most popular video was whatever about it was very, very important. And also now he's bringing it to remembrance that it's more happening now than ever, I guess, or about to happen. Like the, the train, he's basically warning people, don't miss what's about to happen. And it's interesting when I was thinking of all this, this video came up. It's some um, video that came up all talking about portals are real. And so this just came into my feed and I was like, right, is like another confirmation, right? When I was thinking God was saying, talk about this. So what do I want to talk about portals? So right now God has been, or I have been, I should say, this is, I don't know if this is God, this is more me. I have been listening to the dramatized Bible as I drive a lot of times where it's like, I don't know if you heard about it, but you can look it up on YouTube, the dramatized Bible um, with me and my kids because it has sound effects. So I was recently at the part where Jacob saw Jacob's ladder. They call it Jacob's ladder. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but basically Jacob, he um, left his country and went to go find a bride. I think that's when he had this dream. And then he ends up on his way there. He He's escaping Esau, I think at this point, going to look for his wife um, and find a wife. His mom sends him away. Um, and he then has a dream. He lies down on his travels. So he's alone on a traveling journey and he lies down and he basically dreams of this portal. He sees angels ascending and descending from heaven. Um, it's a portal. God really wanted to bring my attention to this. And you may be like, how does this at all match up with train derailments? And where are you going? This literally will connect. I mean, how? It will connect. And this is, there's so much here. And I guess I should tell you where he saw this vision. He ended up um, naming that place and saying this is a sacred place and just realizing he had found the portal to heaven. Literally, that's what he said. He said he found heaven's gates. And I think about my video. Um, it's called the, the Gates Open. Jacob literally called it heaven's gates in the Bible. And where is this place, you ask? It's Bethel. Now, let me... Give you more. Let me read this. Nestling in the pastoral mountains of Samaria, Bethel was a significant site in biblical times. It was where Jacob dreamt of a ladder reaching the heavens and later was the seat of the ark identified at Baton, some 20 miles north of Jerusalem. Biblical Bethel is now buried beneath the modern Arab village, yet in its vicinity are some visible remains well worth its visit. The Hebrew name Bethel means house of God. So, but he called it the gates of heaven. So here's some other things at Bethel. From there, okay, this is a verse. It says, from there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. Then he built an altar to the Lord. This is about Abraham um, and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abraham set out and continued toward the Negev. So, sorry, I didn't put the verse number in here, but basically, at Be so what happened at Bethel was Jacob's found the gates of heaven. This is gonna match with all of this. And Abraham first called on the name of the Lord in Bethel. So I'm like, God, this is place is important. This place, literally, you're telling me my video about the gates is important. You're telling me 
to look back into it. And you're telling me to realize that the gates of heaven, the portal is in Bethel. What is so important about Bethel? And God, are you really talking to me about this? So he gave me two confirmations. I will explain how it all ties in, but first I'm going to tell you the confirmation so that you know, or I knew that I was hearing from God and it was so beautiful. So remember, Bethel is literally the gate of heaven. <laughs> this is a very important place in the world and I'll tell you where it is and everything. So listen to this. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, judged Israel at that time. She lived under Deborah's palm tree between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So basically, when I ask for confirmation, I mean, this is personal, but I just want to share it with you so you know I got it. He's saying Deborah basically judged and lived under a palm tree between Ramah and Bethel. So basically, when I was asking God, What's important about Bethel? He's basically saying, well, Deborah, like your namesake or whatever, or like, I don't know what that word is, basically was judging Israel pretty much in Bethel. And then here's another one. But Deborah, this is in Genesis 35, 8, Rebecca's nurse died and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. And the name of it was called that name. So when I asked for a confirmation, I was like, God, uh, is this a thing? Like, do you want me to say this? Is this where the gates of heaven is? Well, obviously the Bible said it is, but is this like related to my video, three gates opening? And he said, hey, both Deborah's in the Bible. There's only two. One was living basically under, uh, living in Bethel under a palm tree. The other one died under an oak tree or was buried under an oak tree in Bethel, both in Bethel, both named Deborah. Come on. So yeah, that was confirmation enough for me, but there's more. What else happened in Bethel? Like, just watch this. On Elijah's last day of ministry on earth, he had Elisha encountered a company of prophets at Bethel. These prophets confirmed Elijah's soon departure. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. <sighs> so where was Elijah being raptured? At Bethel the portal, the gates of heaven. The three gates are opening. This is what God is telling us. <laughs> what God is telling us is his rapture train, he's probably gonna take us through Bethel. Like we don't even know. Like what if when you come off the earth, like you have to go through a portal? I don't know. Like, I don't know. But what if you have to go? Because you know, this is what I realize. Like there's reality to all this spiritual stuff. Yes, you can teleport maybe into the third heaven. I don't know. But God really... Things can be less, uh, I don't know what the word I'm trying to think, like less supernatural in some ways. And in some ways they're more, but in some ways they're, there's a natural thing, way of things. And we might have to go through a portal. Like we might literally have to go through a portal. I don't know, but there's no way he's telling me all this for nothing. The, look at these connections, look at these confirmations. And I'm going to wrap it into the derailment and everything. But this is a rapture train. What it sounds like he's saying is, that there is a portal. There are three portals opening or two portals and the third gate, three gates, I should say. And the portal where we're going to go up on a rapture train is about to open and don't miss that train. That's what he's saying. That is what he's saying. So, and we literally could go through Bethel. Like it's possible. Like you could be wherever you are in the world, sucked up in the sky and shoot through Bethel, through the portal there that Jacob saw. I mean, isn't this amazing? Guys, look at this, though. This is where it talks about that verse. Um, and Elijah said to Elisha, please stay here for the Lord has sent me unto Bethel. But Elisha replied, surely the Lord lives. And as you yourself live, I will not leave. you." So that verse that I just read, it's 2 Kings 2-2. Two, two. So 2 Kings 2-2. Two, 2-2-2. Two. Two, two, two. Now, again, with the numbers, but I made a whole video where I was woke up from a nap and I felt God told me to look up three numbers in triplicate from five to like five, four, three, two, one. So five, 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 four, four, four in the Strong's Greek specifically. And it made a sentence. It made a sentence. So I made a video about it. Um, you know, I'll link that video. I'll link it in the comments. I'll pin it. Um, but basically, 222 was a rapture. That's what he showed me when I did the, I'll, I'll put the video in the pinned comments. Like, it feels like all my old stuff is coming back. I hate to do things for no reason. And it feels like it's all coming so that it's not, it wasn't a waste. Anyway, so this rapture verse about Elijah is 2 Kings 2 2, 2 2 2. So that was another little, like, you know, cherry on top of the cake. So let's 
tie this all together. Where, you ask, is Bethel now? Well, it's Palestine. That's right. It's the West Bank. You guys, the West Bank is Bethel. So the portal, the most fought after, sought after, war-torn place in the world, the West Bank, which is the most dangerous place to live anywhere in the world, is Bethel. A wasteland. But the most fought after place. Are you guys even here? The gate to heaven is the West Bank. <sighs> so how does that tie into the train derailment? Well, what did I just say? This derailment, this is it from space. Look how bad that was. Or from sky, from the sky. Somebody took it as they were flying. It was in Palestine, Ohio. Where did I just say Bethel was? It's in Palestine. No, these are not coincidences. This is Palestine. This is Bethel, the gate to heaven. Look at that flag, guys. Like, look, I've told you before, red, green, white, and black. That's literally the four horsemen. It's literally the four horsemen, red, green, white, and black. Anyway, I've been through that before, that every nation surrounding Israel, their flags are red, green, white, and black. Every nation, look up a map. So anyway, he tied it all in for me. He tied it. So what am I saying? When I wanted to separate the two videos about the three gates opening, he said, no, put them together. I said, I don't know why, Lord, until today. I'm literally recording this today. I put, so what I do is I use the program and I put like all the little pictures together. And then when I have time, when I'm alone, like when I can get um, somebody to help me with the kids and then I can get by myself, I record it. So you don't hear the kids in the background. Anyway, it took me three days to get to this moment. But what I'm trying to say is I didn't know the connection until this morning. And he told me, the train derailment was in Palestine, Ohio, and Palestine, the real Palestine, in the West Bank, which is the, the most intense place, is the gate of heaven where Jacob had, he saw the gate of heaven and the angels going, ascending and descending, and Abraham first sought the Lord, and Elijah was raptured in the West Bank. Oh my gosh, you guys. And think, I said the three gates are opening. And I said, we're when we come back from heaven with him, with the train behind him, when we come back, we're coming through probably another portal and it's here again. <laughs> I just can't. I, I can. I must. Anyway, so guys, was this not amazing? I hope people really, I know I'll get at least like maybe a thousand people watching this, but it's the kind of one where I'm like, Lord, please can this spread around? But he likes, he'll do what he wants to do. And even if less people see it, it's because he knows who will be willing to like hear this and it's long and stuff. So he just knows. And this is the kind of thing where I want to say, honestly, share this. Like, honestly, guys, this is one of the best amazing things that God has shown me. So let me try to sum things up for you. I made a few points. Um... So last week I saw a speeding train. I got stopped at it and it flew by faster than I've ever seen. And I was listening to a song at the very moment saying, you, uh, you just missed the train. And in the song, Kelly Clarkson was saying, looking up at the sky, she was looking up at the sky thinking she just missed the train. So, um, that was a warning. And, uh, yeah, let me just keep moving on. So then back to the, down to the train derailment, that speeding train made me think of this train derailment that happened and many, there's many of them, you know, many, but the Ohio one was like the largest and the most deadly and horrible. Um, and so that made me think, Lord, why are we, why are you, why, what's this derailment? And I believe it's the enemy saying it's his plans to derail people from making it on the rapture train being ooh, through discouragement through if there's any physical means you can do or like whatever but it's more to me like the spiritual element of it um and so that relates to everybody's gone in the rapture which was made on the same day the same day i made my my video not the same year but the same day 8 11 um and it is a, a large partly about train derailments and you know again it's not of god but what it is is again another it's pointing again at derailing the rapture, derailing people's hopes, dreams, accountability, or not accountability, like, you know, a prayer accounted worthy, these kind of things um, to leave in this rapture train. So there's two sides of it. There's an encouragement side, there's a warning side from God, and there's also like a um, a sabotage to it. And then that movie Journey, same thing, kind of like showing it's hopeless. And even when you go, you know, it's pointless, look where you're going to end up. Like, it's just a sad portrayal. And then um, Psalm 68, which is all about the actual biblical, 
Jesus' train. It actually says that. Now, not all versions say that. I believe the English standard, standard version uses the word train, but other versions, it's very similar. Um, so this, um, I do think that she was given this revelation because how could that even be a thing, um, Melissa? So in that, he ha he leads a train, a beautiful train, a procession, a parade out of Abraham's bosom to the father's house. And he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. And then the next thing was the portals. God wanted me to tie in these portals that I thought, hey, it doesn't fit. And he showed me it does. So my video, the three gates, they're opening. And these gates are portals. And this is amazing. Now the third gate, it's, I mean, it's sealed shut. So it's in Israel right now. Um, maybe that one's not necessarily a portal, but there are two portals that I was discussing. And Bethel is one of them. And this huge confirmation that he gave me about Jacob's ladder being in Bethel, which is the West Bank which is where we will probably go up and I don't know for sure but possibly and come back out of at least come back out of because that's enters you right into Israel um so anyway he's bringing our attention there I think what he's just saying is the time is almost now and it's 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 a mixture of warning as well as encouragement and just kind of showing you that there is plans to um, sabotage this whole thing, you know, but it, inevitably this is for encouragement. Um, and then I said, my confirmations of Bethel, the fact that both Deborah's one lived in Bethel under a palm tree and one was buried under an oak tree in Bethel. I mean, that's amazing. Um, honestly, when I heard that Deborah was judging basically between or in Bethel, I was just so encouraged by that. I was so encouraged. And the most, um, one of the most amazing things was Elijah was raptured. Two, 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 second Kings two, two in Bethel. Oh, there's so much. The point to all of this is the song that I heard when this all began, when I got that tornado warning that didn't happen, it never happened. I got the tornado warning at 333 on channel 911 that said, get your house in order. Sorry, the song said while it was when it was playing, when I got that warning, said, get your house in order because the train leaves tonight. That is the point. That's the point of all of this that he's trying to say is get your house in order because the train leaves tonight. Obviously not tonight, literally. That's what the song was saying. But what this all is pointing to is these three gates. It's these three gates he was trying to tell me. He's like, you know, if you want to get on this rapture train, if you want to leave out of Bethel and come back with him on that train, you know, for the second coming, if you want to be a part of this amazing procession and parade and amazing event, then you need to get your house in order because the train leaves tonight. And the way that train, the second train, so there's two train, well, one was a train song and a tornado warning. And then the other one was a song with an actual train and it sped, I'm telling you faster than I've ever seen. So um, I believe what he's doing is connecting that derailment, which is in Palestine, Ohio, with Palestine, which is Bethel in the West Bank. He's saying those two are connected. One way they could be connected is obviously the names, but just showing that the sabotage, like that there is an effort to sabotage that that place and and that portal and this event. You see what I'm saying? It's just like a sabotage of the rapture train, just like everybody's gone to the rapture. It's just like a sabotage, like a darkening. Uh, this, it's like, you know, the enemy saying, I don't want this to happen. I'm not gonna be happy about it. I'm not gonna let it just go smoothly. I'm going to try to derail it. And what God is saying is, focus on me, get your house in order because the train leaves tonight. So I don't know where you are in your walk with Christ, if you don't even believe, if you're a believer a long time or whatever when you're listening to this video, but I hope it blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. If you are not uh, a believer at, in Jesus Christ, that he died and he rose again and that he's coming back for us and that the Bible is true, I'm telling you now that it is all true and you have a huge uh, reward and unbelievable future ahead of you if you choose to believe. Um, there's, he's preparing the most amazing place for us. Think about going through a portal to an amazing place. So, so please get your house in order because the train leaves tonight. Hope that blessed you. And until next time, God bless and shalom.